It looks like Infinity Ward has decided that before Cold War drops, they wanted to go out with a bang and Oh boy, is it a bang. As if shotguns weren't polarizing enough, we now have probably one of the most controversial shotguns in COD history, which is the AA-12. I know it's not the in-game name, but come on, it's the AA-12, we all know it is. It's a fully automatic shotgun. Yes, fully automatic, you did hear that right. And it comes with four different ammo types on top of that. Buckshot, Slugs, Dragon's Breath, and Frag Rounds. And in this video, you can be damn sure we're gonna talk about every single one. And not just in multiplayer, we'll be looking at both multiplayer as well as Warzone and taking a look at the gun and its ammo types in each mode, going over attachments, basic weapon stats, best classes, and going over what my thoughts are on this gun. I can tell you guys now, it is going to be a long one. I thought about breaking this one up into parts, but I like the idea of having one single longer video since people often tell me that's what they enjoy. So grab your popcorn and a slushy because we got a lot to go over and guys, this one took a lot of work, so I would really appreciate any support for this video by liking it or even subscribing because it was a doozy. As always, check out the timestamps in the description. If you're here for Warzone, you can skip to a certain part and check out the information that it's specific to that mode. And with that, Let's get right into it, starting with the basic stats and multiplayer portion of the gun. The AA-12, or Jack-12, is a fully automatic shotgun that fires at around 330 rounds per minute. This is faster than all of the other shotguns and is capable of throwing lead downstream in an even more ridiculous fashion, more so than the Origin-12. Looking at that damage profile, the AA-12 can actually one-shot people at very close ranges, and this max damage range is actually the smallest of the shotguns, with a range of about 3.3 meters. The Origin is actually a bit better by maybe half a meter or so, but this one-shot range is really short and most notably you'll be getting a lot of two shot kills if you're very close. This two shot range if you're aiming down sights is actually pretty impressive given how this gun is supposed to be a bit weaker in firepower. I was getting two shot kills up to around 13 meters or so when fully aimed down sights which is actually really surprising and pretty awesome but that's almost 90% of the time never going to happen because your pellet spread is going to screw you over and people will be moving around and jumping and all that. If you hit fire I was still getting two shots up to like 9 meters or so as well so that's pretty nice again considering how fast this gun can shoot. If you can get that two shot kill your time to kill is going to be insanely fast at about 181 milliseconds which is super fast and actually pretty competitive competitive up close. You can absolutely delete people from existence with this gun at really close range. And notice how I said at really close range, because once you start to drift away from that range and get to like 10 meters or so, it can take three, four, five, and sometimes more shots to kill. If you're really reaching at its max range, which is about 23 meters with no attachments by the way, you can get like eight hit markers. I'm not, I'm not kidding. It's not meant to be shot from that far. And if you get a kill on someone from that distance, congratulations because you beat a potato. The key to working with this gun and making it work is staying in that 10 meter range like with the Origin and playing to its strengths there. You can kill people outside of that, of course. It's just asking for a bit more trouble, especially against multiple people. Now, one of the big drawbacks for this gun is the magazine size, which is only eight. You'll be reloading a lot. That is, until you get the 20 round mag and the insanely ridiculous and hilarious 32 round magazine. 32 rounds, that's just, wow, that's, that's a lot of ammo and it's nearly quadruple the normal mag size. Both of these attachments are essential to using this gun and if you can control your shots a bit well, the 20 round mag is usually just enough because as you'll see, it isn't that bad on your aim down sights time or your movement speed like the 32 round one is. Looking at some range affecting attachments, we have a few to choose from. The influx barrel, which only affects our aim down sights time negatively, can give us about 9% more range. And the big boy barrel, the torrent barrel, takes it up about 15%. So the max damage range goes up from 3.3 meters to about 3.8 meters. But the true star here is the Marauder Suppressor, which gives us 27% more range and takes it up to 4.2 meters. Combining that with the big barrel will give you 42% more range, which is really freaking good. So this is a strong combination to run, but be careful because the Marauder and the Torrent Barrel both affect not only aim down side speed negatively, but movement speed as well. You can see here it's pretty slow and when you stack that 32 round mag on top with these two, get ready for some LMG style movement speed. I never do this because I can't stand being slow and it's really slow. So it's just something to keep in mind when picking attachments. Looking at the spread patterns, the AA-12 has a good bit of spread to it normally, but when you aim down sights you get a surprising amount of tightness to that spread. Aiming down sights 
sights may not be what most people end up doing, but it can actually make a difference if you're a bit further away. It's very similar to the R90's pellet spread, but just a little wider. Each of the barrels effects spread differently, and as you can see, they do pretty much what you would expect them to do. Aiming down sights does really help, and what's kind of crazy here is the choke attachment. So the choke itself doesn't give any crazy boost to range or anything like the Marauder did, but just look at the pellet tightness when you aim down sights with it and with the biggest barrel. I mean, what the hell is that? That's super tight for a gun like this, and I have a feeling this will be slept on, but at further ranges, the choke will make your gun a bit more consistent because most of all your pellets will be hitting. The Marauder will still probably be the attachment people use because of that range boost, but the choke is really nice on this gun, surprisingly so. Moving on from damage to some other basic stats, let's look at the aim down sights time and the sprint out time. The base aim down sights time is around 317 milliseconds, which is pretty average, it isn't anything special and it works, but it definitely needs to be a bit faster in my opinion. The sprint out time is around 20 frames or 333 milliseconds, which is really slow for aggressive playing, and this is by far the biggest issue I had with the gun when I was leveling it up because I was running around so much people would be sitting there just waiting for me, and it was painful to get that sprint out time, plus the time it takes to kill. Now before we move on, let's check out the aim down sights time and the sprint out times with all the right attachments to help them. Here is a master sheet of all aim down sights affecting attachments that are important. The choke doesn't affect aim down sights time much at all, and it seemed to be less than a frame or so, same with the 20 round magazine. The 32 round mag though definitely hurts with an extra 3 frames of aim down sights time, so it is noticeably slower to aim down sights with. And with the other shotguns, the marauder suppressor and the biggest barrel hurt aim down sights time quite a bit especially together, but you get the most range out of these attachments. Looking at sprint out times, the 1 milliwatt laser barely helped with our sprint out time, and with the 5 milliwatt, it didn't really help as much as it normally does with the other shotguns. When we add the stipple grip with the 5 milliwatt laser, you'll see it's better, but if you remember the other shotguns, this one actually falls short here by a little bit, and you can definitely notice it when you're used to rushing with the other shotguns. I'm sure this is done for balancing, but the Model 680 can sprint out with the 5 milliwatt laser around 167 milliseconds, or 10 frames, and the R90 in Origin 12 can sprint out in about 133 milliseconds or 8 frames. So it's not super slow, but it does have the slowest sprint out time of the shotgun class even with the 5 milliwatt laser, so it's just something to keep in mind. Don't expect to be Speedy Gonzales with this gun at all. So for the buckshot version of this gun, that's about it in terms of what's special about it. I do want to note that this is an open bolt shotgun, which is kind of like the Uzi, but there's not really a huge delay between when you pull the trigger and when it actually fires. It's pretty much like the 357 now, where it's pretty much immediate, so it's not really something to take into account. It's a powerhouse up close, but like the Fennec SMG, it falls short pretty quick, and that ammo capacity is something you have to upgrade basically immediately when you unlock it. Now, because I don't want this video to be like 30 minutes long, we're going to go ahead and check out the ammunition types and what makes them special, starting with the slug rounds. Now, if you're like me, the first thing you thought about when you heard we were getting an AA-12 was full auto slugs, and it's kind of like a mini Odin assault rifle, but with really crappy range. Here is the damage profile for slugs, and as you can see, you can one-shot headshot up to about 17 meters with no attachments, and up to about 6.3 meters, you will only be getting one-shot kills chest and up, so if you hit stomach at that range, it's going to take two shots to kill. Not bad considering the rate of fire, of course. Past 17 meters, it'll be about two shots to the head, and past that, I wouldn't really recommend going for the kills because the recoil can be a bit bad and you don't need to be straying too far beyond that. With slugs, I like to post up medium range, say 15 to 20 meters, and go for the head and chest as much as I can and control my shots. So in other words, as much as you may want to, I don't really recommend just spraying like crazy because that recoil can get you killed. Instead, tap your trigger and control your rate of fire yourself and make sure each shot is as deliberate as possible. I had the most luck with this method, but you can spray people and it is fun. You just need to aim slightly lower and expect two shots to kill in most ranges. I usually spray if they get in my face and I can control my aim and rate of fire outside of that spitting distance. Of course, with attachments you can buff these ranges up, and as usual the Marauder is the best choice with the biggest barrel if you want the most range, and that takes your max damage range up to about 3.4 meters, so about a 31% increase in range for slugs. For me though, I focus on aim down sight speed more. In terms of slug spreads, well, the barrels don't really seem to help that much with it. Granted, the slugs themselves don't sway that far from center, but they do drift a little bit more, and the barrels and even the choke don't really help that much. The tightest, of course, was the torrent 
barrel with the choke, but even then, it's not like the 725 or the 680 where the spread was very minimal with the larger barrels. So slugs are more inaccurate for this gun than with other shotguns, but not by that much. They are still certainly useful, but you'll notice you may miss some shots at longer ranges, and most likely it's because of this small bit of spread. I notice it really when I go for longer range headshots. So normally I stick to medium range engagements so I can get more one shot kills and upper torso shots more easily and with more control. Moving on to our next ammo type, the dreaded Dragon's Breath Rounds, because a full auto shotgun itself just wasn't enough to piss off the majority of players. With the AA-12, Dragon's Breath gives you a base one-shot kill range with no burn effect, and then past that, a burn effect kicks in and it can kill them in extra three ticks of damage. Here, the base one tap with no burn is about 3.3 meters, which is identical to the base buckshot AA-12, and then the burn can kill in one shot up to about 8.7 meters. The max range, meaning the range you can get hit markers, is sitting at a around 21 meters, which is about 2 meters short of the original range for Buckshot. Now equipping the Marauder and the Torrent Barrel, the two best range increasing attachments, gets you a one shot kill of 4.9 meters and a burn distance of 12 meters. This is actually better than the base Buckshot one shot kill range by a small bit, like 2 tenths of a meter, so it isn't that noticeably better, but Dragon's Breath is nice on here and it can ruin people's days. Just picture a whole team of people spamming this in your face. While it is nice and it can do damage, it only has 8 shots. With the special mags, that is always the problem. 8 shots is really not enough for maybe like more than 2 people if you're spraying and praying at anything past spitting range. So it's nice, but you're gonna need to run sleight of hand because you'll be reloading a lot. Now personally, I don't actually run sleight of hand, but I have a feeling most people probably would appreciate that, and as well as scavenger for that matter. You still with me? We still got a lot to go, so if you need to, go take a potty break. You back? Okay, let's continue and look at frag rounds. So what the heck are frag rounds? Well, it's like little explosive shells that explode upon impact, and they can dismember players too, which is hella cool. So for frag rounds, they are capable of getting one-shot kills, stomach and up, up to around 11 meters with no attachments. Past that, it's almost always going to be a two-shot kill to the body. For headshots, it seems like they will headshot basically at most ranges. Certainly most ranges you'll be trying to kill someone, like past 100 meters. In this example, it's 100 meters away and it still gives you a one-shot kill to the head. Otherwise, if you hit stomach or something, it's going to take two, and anything below that, it's going to take three shots to kill. So always aim higher with these. And yes, frag rounds do have splash damage, and that is nice when you want to try and weed out pesky campers. You can chuck a few of these into the room where they are, and I bet their white pants are going to be brown pants real quick. In terms of the velocity, frag rounds have the slowest velocity compared to the other ammunition types, like slugs. If you see this example, the slugs hit the target about 100 milliseconds or or 6 frames quicker than the frag rounds at 100 meters. And like slugs, you have to aim higher than your intended target at these ranges. So just picture these as how like slug rounds used to be before the buff that they got. Up close, it isn't too bad to hit targets, but further away, you really need to lead your targets more than slugs. And also, like slugs, don't hit fire these unless the enemy is really close to you. So frag rounds against players are kind of niche. They're effective if you hit headshots, but that's pretty hard to do, and I usually end up getting splash damage or something like that. But how about score streaks though. Certainly something like these will do well against them, and yeah, they kind of do, depending on the streak. You can actually one-tap UAVs with the frag rounds, which is kind of hilarious to do, and that's without FMJ. Against a Wheelson, it takes about 16 shots, which isn't as good as Dragon's Breath, which only takes about 8 or so. When you put FMJ on, it does help a little, and VTOLs will take about 16 shots, and Juggernauts will take about 22 shots, so that's pretty nice. Vehicles are also weak against frag rounds, and with FMJ on, you can disable them pretty quick. An ATV in Ground War, for example, can be disabled in just two shots. Not blown up, like I said, but rather disabled. It still takes about a whole clip to blow one up. In Warzone, this is pretty similar, but we'll get to that soon. Overall, frag rounds are nice for many different things, but they aren't really that great at one particular thing in multiplayer. They're kind of a jack-of-all-trades type of ammo, but one thing they have going for them is it's really fun to blow up someone's head from a mile away with a good shot. Try them out, and make sure to use them with spaced-out shots, like with slug rounds and lead your targets, and don't be afraid to blow up some streaks or vehicles. With this, that will cover the AA-12 for multiplayer. Now what I want to do is delve right into Warzone and how the AA-12 performs with each individual ammo type. For Buckshot, the AA-12 and its max damage range will take at least 3 shots to kill, with about 120 damage per shot. No matter what, you will not get 1 shot kills against fully armored players. Past this 3 shot kill range, it's going to take up to about 6 to 8 shots to kill one person, assuming you are hitting your pelt 
pellets in that 10 to 15 meter range. This max damage range for three shots is about 3.4 meters, and this of course is helped or hindered by the barrels and muzzle attachments. As usual, the Marauder is the best attachment for increasing overall range. With its rate of fire, the time to kill for this gun in Warzone is sitting at around 363 milliseconds, which is fast, but not as fast as the Origin 12 if you notice, at least in its max damage range. But the nice thing about the AA-12 is how forgiving it can be up close. It shoots so fast and puts so much lead downstream that it works wonders up close, but past 10 meters, you're going to be having a really hard time. It works decently, but it is just not going to kill someone quick enough compared to an AR or an SMG. Since it takes this many shots to kill, the 20 round mag is again pretty much essential, and the 32 round mag is probably a little overkill, but it works really well because no matter what, you can just spray and pray and spray and spray and spray and overwhelm players. I like the 32 round mag in Warzone because I can spray if someone is potentially hiding or something, and I just feel like it's a great close quarters weapon to have. I actually don't think it's as strong as the origin, but not by much. The AA-12 just doesn't carry much strength at range, but luckily you can spam the hell out of it to make up for it. Up next, slugs in Warzone. Slug rounds have a similar profile and damage to other shotguns, but the damage drastically goes down past 17 meters. If you look at the ranges, slugs for the AA-12 will never down in one shot to the head against a fully armored player. Right off the bat, it's already weaker than the others. In fact, past 17 meters, it will take three headshots to kill. Hitting stomach and up, you will be mostly getting three shot kills up to 17 meters, otherwise it's going to take 4. Luckily, chest shots can down in 2 shots up to 17 meters, so long as you aim high. You can 2 tap people assuming you're aiming chest and higher, and as usual avoid the limbs as they really hurt your damage. Slugs in Warzone are fun and neat, but you only get 8, and that is really detrimental to the gun. It still works, but it's not the best slug shotgun in my opinion. I almost prefer the Origin 12 slug rounds over this, not to mention the spread of course makes it really difficult landing those super long range shots. Up next we have Dragon's Breath. Now Dragon's Breath can deal at most around 150 damage to an enemy in its max damage range, which is about 4 meters. It basically makes the gun better all around compared to Buckshot in Warzone, so I definitely recommend giving this one a shot. It can overwhelm players one on one and it is not to be messed with at all. At 10 meters it took about 4 shots to kill with this, and while all this sounds nice, again you only get 8 shots. That's why the AA-12 is usually going to be a good secondary to another weapon, but on its own, especially against squads, it's going to be pretty hard to make it work well with that limited ammo, unless you have that 32 round mag. Dragon's Breath is, as usual, the best way to run the shotgun, but with only 8 shots, you're going to have to play very carefully and choose engagements more carefully. Now let's move on to frag rounds, which I'm sure a lot of you are curious about in Warzone. Against people, they're really nothing special. In fact, it takes about 3 shots point blank to kill someone, even with headshots. For whatever reason, I guess for balancing frag Frag rounds are really bad against players, they just don't get the job done well enough, and they have slow travel time, and the limited 8 shells, so it's really not an ideal way to run the gun. The true power of these rounds in Warzone is how well they can handle vehicles. This is a really easy and convenient way of dealing with people in helicopters, cars, and ATVs, because if you pack on FMJ, you could take out helicopters in just a clip of 8 rounds, and since you have splash damage, you have the chance of hitting the pilot on top of the helicopter, so it's like killing two birds with one stone. I tried it on a few different vehicles, and it's definitely a great way to deal with them. Yes, it only has 8 shots, but you can spam and hit a large target like a truck pretty easily, so this ends up being a great secondary weapon to use because of its utility in dealing with vehicles. Not only that, but like in multiplayer, you can weed people out and apply pressure pretty well with these because of that splash damage. Little explosive blasts going off one foot away from you is going to get your heart rate going, and if you have a squad, you can really help them out by just applying pressure to enemies. So basically, a Against players, it's okay, but its true power comes from dealing with vehicles. It's like a rapid fire grenade launcher. Okay, that is it for the information. Oh man, if you just wanted to know the mechanics and all that, there it is. Now, I'm going to show you guys some class setups for each mode and then talk about my overall thoughts on the gun. Now, for multiplayer, if you want good range and good mobility, try using the choke, the torrent barrel, 5 milliwatt laser, the 20 round drum mag, and the stippled grip tape. As usual, I tend to rush a lot and I move a lot, so I usually use the 5 milliwatt laser with the stippled grip since the stippled grip gives us both a boost to sprint out time as well as aim down sights time. The choke is going to help make the gun more consistent at further ranges, and the barrel with that will make sure your pellet spread is nice and tight over those longer distances. 
If you want a little bit more of an adventurous class, use the Marauder Suppressor since it gives you the best range of the attachments, the 5 milliwatt laser, the stippled grip tape, and the 32 round mag. This is the spray and pray class and it's a monster and it's bound to get people up in arms because you'll be throwing lead downstream like no other. If you want a slug class, use the choke for better spread, the tack laser, the tsunami stock, stipple grip, and the slug rounds. This is built around a fast aim down sights time. Now your sprint out time will suffer, but you can always swap the tack laser with with the 5 milliwatt laser like I normally do if you want to balance it out a little bit more. In Warzone, try using the Marauder and the Torrent Barrel for awesome range, the 5 milliwatt laser and stippled grip tape, and then Dragon's Breath. I think if you're going to be up close and personal, use Dragon's Breath to deal with people more effectively, but this is best served as a secondary with an assault rifle because of it only having 8 shots. You can use the 32 round mag if you want, but your movement speed will be very slow and I think Dragon's Breath is just always a good choice in Warzone for one-on-one -on -one engagements. Then we have a frag round class used to take down vehicles. I use the rubberized grip to keep the recoil down a bit so I can make it easier to hit vehicles. The frag rounds, the tack laser for stability, the marauder to give a little bit of range and keep me quiet, and then FMJ. Go ahead and throw FMJ on because this point of this class is to use it mostly on vehicles and it's not really going to be for actual players. It's almost like a secondary launcher type thing. And that is it for the stats and information part of this video. And man, it's a long one. It's one of my longest videos I've done and I'm pretty tired just from this one video. Having to test four ammo types and get a video out as soon as I could was pretty tiring, but it's definitely worth it. If I had to rank this gun, I'd give it a solid B. I don't think it's overpowered currently and I know the community loves to pick and choose clips to show that it is, but compared to other guns, even other shotguns, I find it solid, but just not amazing. I'd much rather have a Model 680. I I was one-shotting plenty of players using the AA-12 because it just couldn't get the power out faster than I could with my one solid shot. But it is great. It's a good shotgun and it has a ton of variety, so this is a great way to end the main life cycle of modern warfare. Right now, everyone's running this gun, and shotguns for that matter, so I know it's annoying, but it's gonna die down soon, guys, I promise. And once it does, then people can hopefully see that this gun isn't really broken or anything like that. It's just incredibly annoying. Personally, I'm still more tired of getting quickscoped by cars and R700s all the time. And guys, that is just about gonna do it for this video. I know it's long, and if you stuck with it, thank you guys so much. You guys are amazing, and I seriously appreciate it. Please share the video, spread the love, because this one took a lot of time to make. So please make sure to leave a comment and a like, and let me know what you guys think of this legendary shotgun. And with all that being said and out of the way, I will see you guys in the next video.